Good afternoon, my name is Beth Doors and I have the opportunity to be a part of the Center for Experiential Learning. Welcome to the Center for Experiential webinar where we'll be focusing on the startups. For those that might be interested in our nonprofit clients and or our international clients, feel free to check out the Olin Business School YouTube channel. So a little bit of housekeeping for today. For those that are just joining us, uh, please make sure that you have uh, any background noise muted. Uh, and if you are unable to hear us, please use the icon where questions exist uh, and you can let us know if you're unable to hear us. Certainly we'll be taking questions over the course of the next hour. Feel free to provide that with us. We'll try to incorporate it into the uh, regular part of the presentation. Should we fail to do so, we'll be more than happy to talk at the end of the presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. Startups. What's so interesting about our startup community was that Matt and Mark last year uh, said that St. Louis was one of the top fast, five fastest growing cities for startups. And Owen CEL uh, is an integral part of that St. Louis startup community. From Locker Dome to Sparrow Labs, St. Louis startups are really capitalizing on that opportunity to engage with Wash U student-led consulting teams. Joining me today to talk a little bit about their experience is a variety of different students that have participated in a variety of our different programs. Daniel Bentel, who's the director of our CEL and an alum of the MBA program, will get things started off with talking about the different opportunities that the Center for Experiential Learning has to engage with our startup community, be that here locally within the St. Louis community or globally. And then along joining him will be Adam Clark, who has participated as a consulting uh, team representative, as well as is currently the CEL uh, fellow. And then the remaining four gentlemen will be able to talk about their story, their impact with the student, uh, with their student teams, and their impact with that project and client. So as I, uh, as I said before, Daniel Mintel, Bintel will be able to talk a little bit about what today's agenda is going to look like. Thank you all for joining us uh, this morning. Uh, we're going to do three things today. Uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the Center for Experiential Learning, what we do here, and how that uh, how that relates to Olin's overall mission, uh, which some of you already are uh, familiar with. Then we're going to hear some stories from the front line. So Beth had just introduced our panelists this morning. We're going to talk a little bit about um, they're going to introduce themselves and kind of what brought them to Olin, and then talk a little, little bit about uh, their clients, the projects that they've been working on over the course of uh, the last year. Uh, and some of the takeaways that they have from their experiences, and then we'll open it up for some Q&A. So as Beth had shared, um, we uh, appreciate your sending questions in throughout the course of, uh, of our time as we're going through some of the projects and stories, and we'll, uh, we'll be sure to address those as we wrap up. So broadly, the Center for Experiential Learning is essentially a consulting practice run from within the business school here at Washington University. Um, we, uh, we have a two, two-fold mission of innovative learning for our, our students and impact for our clients. And the thing that sets us apart relative to a lot of other centers in academia is that we're industry focused. And so the outcomes for our clients and the projects that we take on um, are very client focused. And the mission and the outcome uh, and the deliverables for our clients are tantamount to the learning uh, mission of the, of the institution and of the center as well. And so that's why a lot of the projects that we take on are, are projects that our clients might otherwise be taking to a larger scale firm. And they're trusting us with those, knowing that the talent that we're working with is going to matriculate and go on and work in industry at, uh, at maybe even some of these large consulting firms that, uh, that we'll talk about today. So the overall experience in the CEL is very interdisciplinary. It's nonlinear, it's unstructured, uh, it's incredibly challenging. And the reason for that is that it's student driven and faculty guided is that our students are put in the driver's seat. We pull together some of the best from around the campus, not just the business school, assemble them into teams and unleash them on projects with their clients uh, that are in some cases a full 14 week, an entire semester, and in some cases even longer uh, during the course of, of, of their studies and during the MBA and even for some of our undergraduate students that are selected for the programs. Our clients are both here in St. Louis uh, and around the region and around the globe in which our teams are actually deployed to, to do some work on site with our clients throughout the course of, of their semester as well. 
we run seven different programs through the Center for Experiential Learning that, um, that focus on different uh, industries and sectors, uh, different student populations, uh, and, uh, and also different periods of time uh, during the course of, of the, of the uh, MBA program and uh, specialized masters and other programs as well. These are structured as courses, so their course, their uh, students receive credit for these and for the work that they do, but they're non-classroom based. So students are working uh, on site with their clients and or independently uh, here on the campus throughout the course of the time, whether their clients uh, are here in St. Louis or in Shanghai. Uh, today, we're just going to talk about three of them our Center for Experiential Learning Practicum program, which is our flagship full semester uh, experience, our entrepreneurial consulting team, which uh, works exclusively with startups here in St. Louis and primarily um, tech-based startups, uh, T-Rex Incubator downtown, if you're familiar. And uh, our newest program, our metrics clinic, our financial metrics for startup uh, startups program that works with very young organizations who are trying to get a handle on their financial management structure uh, and or working to ensure that their uh, their objectives and their business plan is is informed by very strong financials. So our our CEL practicum. This is what we're known for primarily. It's a it's a full semester, uh, 14 to 16 week engagement, uh, in which students are assembled into teams uh, that are very carefully assembled. So based upon the needs of the project, based upon an initial scope that would be put together with a client. We determine what skill sets are required, and then we pull together the talent necessary to execute on, on, the, on the project outcome. This is a three credit course um, and probably six to nine credits worth of work. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lot to take on, and for that reason, uh, this is an elective. And that is so that we can be incredibly selective with the, uh, the talent that we bring in. Uh, and so for those of you who are looking at the MBA program specifically, uh, this is an elective that one is not permitted to engage in until the core is done. By the core, I mean the first semester of the program uh, in which you get most of your, your requirements out of the way, and then you have some, some more flexibility in your schedule to devote to something like this, uh, which requires a substantial amount of time. And we'll talk in a few minutes about why specifically it requires so much time. The clients we work with uh, in this program are form a very diverse pool. Uh, everywhere from Fortune 50 firms, uh, brand names that you might recognize here, which we've worked with in the last few years, uh, to uh, even some younger organizations, say um, uh, a microbrewery here in St. Louis, to a coffee cooperative in rural Columbia, um, to uh, a very small logistics and forwarding uh, uh, firm in Vietnam. And so they, they do run the gamut, and that's why these teams have to be so carefully assembled, is because the cultures, uh, the missions, stage of growth, uh, of the different firms that we're working with very, uh, very widely. Uh, project directions, uh, just like the, um, the applicant pool uh, for clients, is going to be very broad. So this might be evaluation analysis for a firm. It might be the development uh, uh, or refinement of a marketing strategy. It may be a heavy uh, uh, customer analytics uh, in order to inform a future uh, strategy, or it might be a brand audit. Uh, and for that reason, we're pulling from different disciplines within the business school. Uh, and even across campus, uh, a project may require UX design software experience, for example, and that's, that's something that we're going to go out and find uh, in order to uh, support the team and make sure that they are best equipped to deliver on the project at hand. And that's why clients, um, this is primarily fee-based engagement, which clients are paying for these services, uh, just like they would for a firm, and so the expectations are very high. So just a couple of examples uh, before I move on. I'm going to turn it over to our panelists to share a few stories. Um, just by way of example, this is, a, this is a photo from our team's work on site in uh, La Union, Colombia, uh, in the southwest uh, corner of the country, working with a coffee cooperative called Aspra, uh, Aspra Union, uh, who is working with a brand called La Yacaba Coffee, named after the mountain there. It's a very premium uh, brand of coffee. Uh, it's, uh, the client was a coffee cooperative of 273 farming families who uh, were not yet exporting, or at least not more than two or three percent of their products globally. And our team's charge was to put together um, the so, uh, look at, at the supply chain uh, and structure that would be necessary to get product to the U.S. in terms of uh, regulatory uh, challenges that might need to be addressed, uh, uh, general operations and supply chain, supply chain infrastructure, and the costing and uh, the cost that would be necessary to set up a supply chain, and the volume, uh, volume levels, production levels, and pricing levels that would be required in order to make it uh, economically feasible to do so. 
This was a um, roughly a 16 to 18 week project because it's staggered between semesters. Um, Eric Hunt, in a few minutes, will talk about his project, which was structured in a similar way, so that the team could travel and spend uh, a week plus on site uh, in Colombia during the course of the project and over the course of their, um, their winter break. So the project started in mid-October and finished up in, um, in uh, late March, early, May, uh, early April, uh, and uh, in which the team delivered their final uh, recommendation and reports to the client in La Union. Another example here, uh, again, these projects are not all around the globe. They're right here close to home where we have a lot of need as well, um, and also include very young uh, organizations and some of, some of which are spun out of WashU. So this eFarmic specifically is a client we're working with right now, which is um, their tagline, evidence-based digital health. Um, they have a product and solution that will inform doctors when patients um, are not um, keeping up on their meds and, and thus saving lives. And this is a this is a, an organization started by some of our WashU alumni. Um, Joe McDonald there on the left in the photo, the bottom left, uh, was one of our MBA students who uh, took the red pill upon graduation and, uh, and was co-founder of eFarmix and is now building and growing this firm. And we have a team working with him right now through the same practicum program uh, through which he, he himself was a participant. So moving on here, um, the just overall in the course of the last year, just give you a sense of scale uh, of operation. Um, we had nearly 30 clients through just this one program in the Center for Experiential Learning, ranging again from startup to Fortune 50. Um, these are teams of four to six students uh, working over uh, 14 weeks during the course of the semester. Each individual student is putting up to 150 hours of his or her time during the course of, of, of that semester. Um, and that's, uh, that, that translates into a very substantial impact for our clients we're working with around the globe. Second program we're going to talk about, and Shaheen in a few minutes will talk about his experience in our entrepreneurial consulting team, in which, like the CEL practicum, it's a full semester engagement, uh, a non-classroom-based course in which we have students working with St. Louis-based startups uh, during the course of that time. Uh, it's primarily in the tech space. Uh, carrying out a project uh, that is is perhaps even more uncertain, even uh, a little bit more nonlinear because of the stage of the organization is uh, is a little bit more consistent in being very early stage, working with very very young companies and companies of a size that would necessitate working directly with the founder and getting a sense of what it takes to get an organization off the ground, some of the challenges uh, that are faced at a very early stage, uh, and what it takes to succeed. Um, uh, in the startup realm here in St. Louis and, and, and the lessons that might translate around the globe. You might recognize some of these names, those of you familiar with the St. Louis area, Locker Dome, Top Up, Sparrow Labs, and other WashU spin out as well. The Metrics Clinic is uh, the last program we'll just spend a few minutes on now. Um, this is uh, one of the newer initiatives that we started within the Center for Experiential Learning, uh, designed specifically uh, to, to tackle uh, very uh, quant-based financial challenges. So, so, for example, building uh, a very detailed financial model for a growing organization that needs to get a better sense of, um, uh, of the, the challenges they're going to be, be facing from a financial uh, standpoint as they grow, as they scale over the course of the next few years to get some better insight into um, how they can perform uh, sensitivity analysis with a greater level of accuracy. Uh, and for this program, we're specifically recruiting not just our MBAs into, into this program, but some more of our specialized master's students who are getting a degree specifically in quantitative finance, um, uh, data analytics, and other disciplines uh, to kind of supplement the management expertise and experience that our MBA students might be bringing. So before I turn it over to our panelists, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the Owens mission uh, here at Washington University and, and kind of the direction we're taking um, with the school and some of the commitments that we have and uh, um, what that means for the Center for Experiential Learning and the clients that we work with as well. And so one of the things that um, in our hundredth year that we've, we've given a lot of thought to is, is, is our mission and, and where, uh, where we want our, our students to have, uh, have experiences throughout the course of their time and um, the kind of leaders that we want to develop. And so a commitment that we've made is doing more work in uh, frontier and developing markets. So um, Central Africa, Southeast Asia, um, other parts of the globe where there are a lot of, uh, a lot of challenges that, that, uh, that, that are faced, um, where there's uh, the kind of development challenges that, that uh, results in a lack of access to education, um, 
lack of access to health care, um, and the, even the corruption uh, within business and government that, uh, that uh, is unfortunately inherent in some of these markets. Uh, and there's a lot of work that can be done here, and, and business as a, as, a, um, as a tool for good is something that we're committed to here. And so we've started uh, something we're calling our International Impact Initiative through the Olin Business School this year. Uh, Cole Donaldson is going to speak in just a few minutes about uh, his experience in a project that fit specifically falls under this umbrella. Uh, and again, the goal here is to uh, not to work not just in emerging markets, but again, uh, markets like uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo and other places where corruption is endemic to the region. And because of that, um, small business owners, farmers, uh, cooperatives, like we talked about a few minutes ago in Colombia, are facing incredible, um, incredible hurdles in order to even just provide for their families. And so we're working to support organizations, small businesses, uh, local leaders and entrepreneurs whose operations are working to, uh, to support the economic development broadly of their immediate regions as well. And so um, a lot of the projects that we've worked on over the course of the last nine months and the, and the last year on five different continents, we'll talk about some of those uh, stories from the front lines here in a moment, have been focused uh, squarely in this space um, with, uh, with, with the, the objective of, of putting our students uh, directly on the front lines to, uh, to, to make a difference in these areas. And so here I'm going to turn it over to Eric Hunt, uh, Eric Hunt's second year MBA, and he has just wrapped up uh, his project with NVP Energy through the CEL practical program. So I'm going to ask Eric to briefly introduce himself um, and then uh, talk a little about um, uh, NVP Energy and mission that he has carried out for that. So. Thanks, Daniel. So uh, as he mentioned, my name is Eric, uh, second year MBA, so set to graduate here in a couple months. I uh, wanted to share a few points from my experience with the CEO practicum. Um, incredible program, uh, incredible way to get outside of the classroom and really uh, get some, some firsthand experience working with a client in the consulting role. Uh, specifically as a team lead, you have a lot of administrative responsibilities as a, uh, in addition to uh, being the day-to-day -day client contact and delegating that work out to, uh, to your, your student team. Um, so very, very rewarding experience, very rich experience, and so uh, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, it's a real strong point of, of our program at Olin. So to give you a little background on, on my project, MVP Energy is a, uh, it's a tech startup in the wastewater treatment space. Uh, they're based out of Galway, Ireland with operations in Dublin, which is the, uh, uh, the photo you see here, the, the Temple Bar area, Dublin. Uh, client is, a, uh, is an interesting man by the name of uh, Michael Murray. Uh, one of the most aggressive salesmen I've ever met in my life. Had the pleasure of being around. Incredibly charismatic leader. He's got a team of about 10 people uh, within Dublin, Ireland, and uh, London as well. And the way that he kind of keeps his team close and honors their loyalty is, is really something that I come to appreciate about him and about the company. So uh, our, our project was kind of on a different timeline uh, that Daniel mentioned earlier. We started in uh, late fall of last year worked over through the winter break and, and finished up actually this morning really we had our uh, our final client call this morning so uh, a good six month engagement with uh, a lot of uh, good accomplishments to report so basically uh, nvp wanted to take their technology and bring it to the united states so in order to do that they needed to know everything about the wastewater treatment industry in the united states and then they wanted us to go ahead and help them develop a go-to-market strategy they were hoping to enter the u.s market somewhere in the next two to five years. Uh, so our project was broken down into two phases. We wanted to first explore the market. Um, I, for one, was not an expert or even familiar with any aspect of the wastewater treatment industry here in, in, uh, in the States. So a lot of good learnings for me in particular. Uh, my team had, had a very diverse background, and so they could lend uh, a lot of different skills and, and areas of expertise to the project as well. So after we did our market exploration, we actually traveled to uh, Dublin uh, where we traveled essentially the entire country visiting some of their commission sites. You can see here uh, we were at a plant in Lurgan, Northern Ireland at a, a meat processing plant where they have a fully operational uh, reactor uh, where they were treating wastewater and, uh, and actually generating some high quality biogas that could then be recycled into the plant and uh, help them with their cost savings. So while on site we were able to have a, a lot of really good work sessions and actually present our, uh, our key findings to Michael and his entire MVP team. Uh, we also got to um, 
you know, kind of lay out our hypothesis moving forward and, and identify some, some really interesting opportunities in the United States uh, for when they did decide to, to enter the U.S. market. Um, you know, the, the big part of, uh, of this project was this on-site visit. It kind of broke up our, our two phases of work. And uh, I guess two, two real things that I wanted to um, kind of share with you that were really impactful for me personally was uh, being able to, to travel overseas and be on site with a client really allows you to kind of foster that relationship. Uh, one of the key pieces of this project is to kind of hone those client relationship skills and learn what it takes to, um, to be a good consultant, to be a good uh, client servant. So being able to sit there at a pub with our client and knock back a few pints of Guinness and, and really talk about what his business challenges were, were one of the most rewarding uh, pieces of, of, of that trip. And of course, you got to experience the country in general. So this is a, a cool shot of us visiting the, uh, the Guinness Brewery in, in Dublin. Um, Fun-filled day where we got to obviously drink a lot of beer, find out about the brewing process, which was one of the key industries in the wastewater treatment uh, landscape. So educational and also also very fun experience as well. And this is what we call team building. Right. Exactly. Exactly. No, no better way to uh, to foster relationship with your client and the team than over over a few pints. So uh, we all we all look like we we're having a very good time there. I know I was. So on on in terms of the outcome, uh, we were able to provide a really strong recommendation to the client that actually pivoted their uh, initial offering for for what we identified as a really big opportunity in the United States. Uh, we were a little a little nervous about uh, offering that recommendation, but we're really confident in the. Uh, analysis that we're able to, to put forth in our, our justification. And so uh, they actually accelerated their U.S. entry strategy and are going to try to uh, get boots on the ground here before the, the end of 2017. So I'm really excited with the work we're able to do. And uh, hopefully that gives you a, a good idea of, of what to expect on one of these international practices. So sir, if you just wrap things up today, so we have something to celebrate. So Absolutely. I think we need to get another Guinness. Sounds good to me. All right, uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Cole Donaldson, uh, take us to another continent um, in which he's currently currently uh, carrying out his work with Mabuno there. So, so uh, Cole, why don't you tell us a little bit about Mabuno and um, well, introduce yourself first and then we'll talk a little bit about your mission. Of course. Hello, everyone. I remember about this time last year was when I think I first heard of the CEL from past students. It was one thing that always came up as uh, key piece of their experience, their um, MBA, and I was just knew I was excited to, to get to be a part of it. So I'm a first year, and this semester currently is the first time I was able to be involved with the CEL. So I decided to join a practicum, and um, luckily I was selected for one of my, one of the ones I was most interested in, one of our clients called Mabuno. They are a young NGO that works to eliminate extreme poverty in the in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, that's an extremely uh, poor area. It's a very conflict-ridden area, and people like Mavuno uh, are trying to use business to really bring uh, the people out of poverty, but not. But the really cool thing I like about Mabuno is that they, they don't just give aid, they really empower people to use business themselves. Um, so, you know, we learned a lot about their mission. We really fought into how they, they are doing things. And the two people you see up on the slide, uh, top left, are David and Dan. And those are the two founders. Um, so really inspiring people, really great people to be able to work with, just get on a call with. Um, and Mabuno right now is at a place where they are growing like crazy. Um, they've, they have an office here in the U.S., in Seattle. Then they have their field operations at their headquarters in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And it, they are just focused, first of all, on growing, uh, growing organizations in different villages, rural villages around Congo, and uh, organizing the people and developing leaders to allow them to really uh, empower, again, the farmers of the area. So they do that by organizing the villages, 
by providing those farmers quality inputs that they usually would have trouble getting otherwise. They give the farmers education on the best techniques, on how to improve their yields. And then they also provide these farmers access to markets that they would not be able to reach otherwise. So Mavuna is really touching a lot of pieces of the agricultural value chain. And as they've been growing, they have realized that although they're a really young organization, they are needing to rapidly professionalize their operations. So that's why they're interested in working with us, working with our team's business perspective, leveraging that knowledge, and really gaining some tools to make sure that their, their very fast pace is guided and the, the progress they're making is focused. Um, so one of the big pushes they've had is moving to added value. So, so they want to not just allow the farmers to sell raw materials, they want to allow those farmers to develop those raw materials into something um, more. For instance, not just selling plantains, but selling plantain flour. That's what our uh, project is focused on right now. So we knew they had this shift uh, to trying to develop ways to let the farmers add value to their products. And at first we were working with, our objective was to uh, look at their coffee operations and um, very much look at how we can add profitability there. But one of the really cool things I've seen and enjoyed through working with Mabuno is how fast they move. So we started our project and we thought we were working with coffee and then you know, three, uh, two weeks later they said, we've actually had a strategic meeting. We're changing our direction completely and focusing on plantains. So that has been my team's project is to look at this new initiative uh, of plantains and figure out how Mabuno can foster the farming of plantains and allow those farmers to develop these value added products for plantains. So they are bringing more wealth into the Congo. Um, and it, it's just been incredibly, incredibly exciting, not just to have the fast pace, but also to really shape the project. We've had to be very comfortable with ambiguity, the uh, being a startup, and also being a, an NGO, we have a lot of um, ability to really direct our path. Uh, so that's been an interesting piece of the project as well, being able to really um, direct where the, the project is going and not just take you know, a set of demands from a client, but work with them and be a real partner with them in developing um, a project that suits their specific needs. Um, so right now we're in the middle of the project. We actually went to visit the uh, visit Uganda over spring break, and that was an incredible uh, nine day experience where we got to meet our client in person for the first time because we had been just doing Google Hangouts meetings, and you really. I found I underestimate the power of a good face-to-face -face meeting. So being in Uganda, it was uh, really, really helpful to just understand, you know, the, the client, where they're coming from, and you know what they really need, what their true day-to-day -day is. Um, and we did it in Uganda because Uganda actually is very, uh, it's advanced uh, farther than the Congo in terms of development. So we wanted to get on the ground and do multiple site visits to see all different pieces of the value chain from the research labs to the farmer, to the market, to the distribution centers, and look at how all those pieces play together and figure out how we, what lessons we could take back to the Congo. So now back home, we're, our project's really taken off. We're able to make uh, having all that context really allows us to move very quickly on the objectives we set out. And one of those main ones I'll mention is developing a financial model for their entire plantains initiative. 
and that will basically allow them to look at an engagement with a specific farmer and see how much that farmer can produce in revenue if they shift to plantains, see their costs that would be associated with that, and also uh, determine how much startup investment Babuna would need to give that farmer. And hopefully when that farmer is profitable, they'll be able to then pay back because again, Mabuno is, is empowering, they're not giving aid. So it's, it's a cool loan concept. So like I said, we're, we're in progress right now. We're talking with the client weekly and two just really key takeaways I've had through the whole experience have been, um, first of all, the client relationship is everything. Um, you know, when we were just talking over the phone, we'd never met in person. That was, we were still productive, but once we hit the ground, everything changed. And understanding them and, and just doing those relationship building things like uh, beyond even work, going to a jazz club for dinner. Um, th those things really bond you together, but also allow you to get a deeper sense of what the client is all about and hopefully what they need. Uh, then number two would be just the impact we've been able to provide. Uh, Daniel mentioned the impact initiative that the CEL is embarking on. And I was really honored to be part of this project for Mabuno because the when I had a call with the CEO, he said, do not underestimate the impact your project can have on the lives of real people in the Congo. And it, just to bring that point home, we learned you know, in our last client meeting that there are now three full-time employees for Mabuno working on this plantains initiative exclusively. So we're just really excited to be part of something um, very transformational that Mabuno is doing and very much at the cutting edge of what they're doing and uh, frankly of what the uh, US uh, or, or what the um, social enterprise movement is doing in general around the world. Um, Mabuno is a great part of that and we loved uh, being on the project with them. Thank you, Cole. I also appreciated how seriously you took um, team building on your trip, just like Eric did. Just a different, uh, <laughs> a slightly different take, but, uh, but a good one. That's, That's right. right. That's the Nile right there. Team whitewater rafting on the Nile at the conclusion of the trip. Uh, good. So moving on here, I'm going to turn over to Rob Garwitz, first year MBA and, um, um, and president of our Entrepreneurship and Venture Capital Association, in addition to his team captaincy and the CEO. So, um, Rob, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Daniel. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so we're going to go from Africa back home here in St. Louis. Uh, my client um, is the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership. Uh, before I dive into the project, I just want to speak to the CL and my overall experience. Um, when I, um, my previous career was in corporate sales, I worked for Nike, and while I loved that career, I knew I wanted to do something more entrepreneurial. Um, I also knew that I wanted to have more opportunities to lead teams, lead organizations um, in an entrepreneurial setting. Uh, so with that being said, the CL, as you've already seen, offers you a number of opportunities to do that. Um, and this project in particular, because I'm from St. Louis, um, both my wife and I are from here. We're both very passionate about helping the region. Uh, this was a project that really spoke to me and, and really selected me other than the, uh, the other way around. Um, so as I mentioned, the De St. Louis Economic Development Partnership, um, they are, that is a joint partnership between the city and the county, uh, both of the regional development uh, bodies um, in 2013. Uh, Fortunately, united to help drive economic development in the region. Um, so re regional development can look uh, a number of ways. So creating jobs, creating opportunities, um, but also promoting uh, more generally entrepreneurship. Um, they, so the development partnership is working with a web developer as we speak, um, and they are uh, building a, a fundraising platform uh, that they plan to launch in the very near future. And the impetus for this product, uh, product or service uh, really came from the Jobs Act um, and the provision in May of 2016 that allowed unaccredited investors uh, to make a private investment in, in a company. And with that uh, provides a, a lot of opportunity for um, 
for small businesses, for startups to uh, tap into and get access to uh, capital um, within the region. So um, it's, it's a huge opportunity. Uh, there's really no roadmap for how this works. Uh, so the, the, with that, um, and you heard Cole mention the word ambiguity, you'll hear that mentioned multiple times. With that comes a lot of ambiguity because, it's, because this has never been done before. Um, our team's role specifically is helping uh, the development partnership build a strategy for a successful launch, period. Um, so with that, uh, there's a number of, of um, tactical checkpoints that we've had along the way. And a big one is identifying um, who the network is going to be uh, for um, this fundraising platform. So any network, whether it's a social network like Facebook, you need to have two sides of the network. You need, in this case, you need businesses. Uh, and on the other side, you need investors. And without one side or the other, the network doesn't uh, doesn't work. Uh, so again, that's that's the challenge that we've had. And success for us is going to, you know, I'd say in a broad sense, and I think this is cool to say, success will mean good things for the St. Louis region. Um, that means we're going to be able to facilitate uh, this untapped capital and bring it to the region, whether it's to small businesses, to startups, to inventors, uh, there, there's a number of areas uh, that this capital could go to. Um, so, so currently we are working on this project at the moment, so we don't have a, um, a delivered outcome yet, but we're, we're getting close and we've made great progress. Um, originally, it's been interesting, um, our client brought us in uh, and wanted us to have more of a sharp focus on, on the marketing angle uh, for launch, but as we've built a relationship with this client, and as we've understood how they're entrepreneurial and they're moving fast and in some cases a little bit uh, a little bit disorganized, we've realized the value that we really bring to them as far as organization goes, as far as a diverse uh, business uh, background um, uh, with our team that we're bringing to the table. Um, we've moved from having a sharp marketing focus to really we've, we're more broadly helping them build a strategy uh, for, from a number of different angles, which uh, for me and for the team is 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 much more intriguing. Um, as far as things that I've learned through this experience, there's there's been a number of them, but uh, the first one that comes to mind is, is the power of people. Um, and I think this really um, applies to the leadership role. Uh, so in my case, there are a number of different stakeholders um, as part of this project. We, I won't bore you with the details, but the Economic Development Partnership is actually uh, linked to a number of different uh, quasi-governmental bodies, which involve political figures, which involve uh, a number of other stakeholders. Um, so getting ideas approved and in front of the right people and, um, and being able to, to get the right people in the room for a meeting um, has been a challenge, uh, but, but fortunately we've made some progress there. And for me personally, I've learned some, some great lessons on how to, how to manage uh, multiple stakeholders. Um, and that doesn't even include on the back end, you know, you're, you're working directly with the CEL that acts like a consulting practice. So you have people that you are responsible for delivering information to in a timely fashion and ensuring that, that the internal, uh, the internal stakeholders are up to speed as well. Um, and then of course, on the people theme, you know, you have to motivate your team. You have, in my case, we got six people on our team, including an advisor who is not only a full-time academic, he's also a full-time venture capitalist. He's busy, my team's busy. We have uh, specialized master's students. Um, we have MBAs, we have an undergrad. Everybody has their own interests. Uh, so motivation uh, and ensuring that everybody's aligned is, is definitely a challenge. Uh, but that comes down to your ability to manage, your ability to communicate and inspire at the same time. Um, and then the second thing I'll end with, just as far as um, an outcome and in something that I've really taken away is this idea of impact. Uh, I mentioned I'm from the St. Louis region, and I, I really came back to WashU um, for that reason. I wanted to do something more entrepreneurial. I wanted I wanted my career to mean something to this region, uh, and this is certainly a project. And there will be many uh, more like it. I can, I, although Daniel can confirm that, but there will be many here, based in St. Louis, whether it's with a startup, a, a local organization um, that really will make a difference for this region. Um, so I think that's been the, the bigger takeaway for me. Um, and that's that's really kind of my project in a in a nutshell. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Good, Rob. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, switch gears real quick and, and talk about our entrepreneurial consulting team, a separate course and program in CEL. 
uh, very similar uh, in nature, but um, uh, the primary difference is that it is focused exclusively on working with early stage startups and directly with founders uh, throughout the entirety of the program. It's very, it's very much tied directly to our entrepreneurial plat uh, entrepreneurship platform in the MBA. Uh, and so uh, for a brief overview here, I'm gonna turn it over to Shaheen Shabru uh, to talk a little bit about his project, the St. Louis Fashion Club. Shaheen. Thank you. Um, so I'm Shane Shabru, and last fall I had the opportunity to work with the Select Entrepreneurial Consulting Team. Uh, my group was paired with the St. Louis Fashion Fund, which going in was very scary because I know absolutely nothing about fashion. But uh, one thing we learned very quickly as a team is even though we didn't have the best fashion sense, uh, the fashion industry is a thriving business that relies on the same business principles, entrepreneurship principles applied universally. So that was somewhere where we were able to work with the fashion-minded individuals working here in St. Louis and help them grow their impact. So the Fashion Fund is a startup in downtown St. Louis. It's really looking to bring together fashion-minded individuals and create a community downtown. So what they were looking for from the CEL was to move from phase one, which was their fashion incubator, and was set and ready to go. And how could they move on to phase two, which was building out that fashion-minded community. Uh, the incubator that I mentioned was their first initiative, which was started about three years ago. They went through the CEL practicum as part of it, and they launched this past January, which was right after we concluded working with them. And that included uh, bringing in six fashion designers from across the nation, who were the six finalists that were chosen to come to St. Louis for a two-year cohort and essentially run their fashion businesses from St. Louis and working into the fashion industry in New York City and around the world. So what they were looking for for phase two was building out that fashion community. And as seemed to be the going theme today, ambiguity was very present there because they kept saying they wanted to build a fashion community. But as most startups, they hadn't defined exactly what that might mean. They were still very early in getting that going. So that was task one was sitting with them and really immersing ourselves in their culture to understand what they meant when they said community and giving that a definition. Uh, what that led to was a pretty unique mission where we had to take everything they were saying, translate it into the business world and help give them step by step on how to get from point A to point B. Uh, the outcomes were we gave them the very detailed step-by-step uh, -step plan on how to build out what they defined as a community, which was not necessarily people tied to the fashion community, but people who had a fashion mind or were just excited about fashion in general, getting them in the same physical location that would be built out with ancillary products such as photographers, models, and other industries that support the fashion industry, as well as other just unique niche type companies such as a greeting card company or other eclectic industries that typically required creative skills that would also help funnel that sense of community in the fashion area downtown. The other step was to help define their biggest problem, which was the supply chain. Uh, they really wanted to build out the fashion community and wanted to have a large manufacturing on-site presence, similar to what you see in New York City, but New York City is not St. Louis and vice versa. So that was not something they were able to do. So we were able to take them down and present a minimum viable product and how to accomplish that and presented the idea of a cut sew factory where you bring in local employees who learn the craft at a very small scale and are able to help the designers build that prototype clothing line, get the measurements down, and then once the item is perfected, it can be set off at an off-site location for larger production, which can then be featured for sales or to take to New York or to show it to other interested bot and clients. And we actually had the opportunity to visit one of their fundraisers one week after our final presentation where we laid out the build out plan on developing that physical and cultural community, as well as the importance of that MVP manufacturing process. And they were able to announce just a week later that they had fully invested themselves in the idea of the Cusso shop and then raised um, an initial amount to get that program launched. So I would say my biggest two takeaways working with the St. Louis Fashion Fund and our team from the select program was first understanding your team and the people you're working with. 
strengths and weaknesses within your team so that you can apply those directly to the client and make sure that you're giving them solutions from every angle that's supported by the evidence that you as your team work together to come through. And then also the biggest takeaway I think was just the experience of working with individuals in the St. Louis area who are bought into the community and looking to improve the local economy with their talents. Great, Shaheen, thank you. To, uh, so we're gonna quickly turn over to Adam Clark uh, to talk briefly about his experience in Ecuador this last, um, this last spring. Uh, specifically with his client, Conquito, there. Um, and then we're going to open it up for some, some questions here, and thank you for sending these in. We'll try to address as many of them as we can. Uh, so I'll ask Adam to talk a little bit about his experience on the CEO leadership team after having been a team lead and a little bit about his experience in Quito. Adam. Perfect. Thank you very much, Daniel. And thank you, everyone, for uh, joining today. Um, as Daniel said, I'm Adam Clark, and I'm a second-year MBA, and I have the pleasure now to act as a CEL fellow. So I've been involved with the CEL for the last three semesters. I led a project with a corporate venture capital arm, um, a chemical company in Shanghai, and now I've uh, switched into a role where I'm playing more of a coaching role for five of our consulting projects with the CEL fellowship program. Um, this last, this last uh, spring break, I got to travel with 10 students to Quito, Ecuador, um, and worked with one of our clients there was called Conquito, which is an agency that helps drive entrepreneurial, entre, entrepreneurial energy in Ecuador. They right now work with co-working space, coaching and incubation, but are really looking to get into the international, uh, international growth, mainly through accelerators. So what this team is working on is helping um, Conquito help startups, or as my hero, Jerry McGuire would say, help me help you. <laughs> Love it. So um, the, the deliverables for this are really going to be um, coaching guides and databases for uh, Conquito to use with their startup clients to help get them access to uh, US accelerators. Uh, two of the big things that I learned um, kind of in, in this travel, but then also with some of my other projects with the CEL, um, one of them, Eric and Rob have both touched on, is the value of face-to-face -face meetings. Um, you know, I got to, to do business in a, a few different languages on a few different continents, and I think that, that was a, a huge part for me was really getting to um, meet these clients face-to-face -face, um, and build those relationships over the um, over the course. Um, my second one is that I do not have the fitness level to play soccer at altitude with. Um, these professional soccer players. So Kiko is up at uh, 6,500 feet, and uh, I was gasping for breath at, at when I got off the bus before we started playing. Um, so um, it was a great opportunity to meet these guys, but uh, definitely need to uh, get back on the treadmill. Good. Adam, thank you very much. Um, so we're going to go open it up for some questions here. You guys have sent these in, so I'm going to read off a few of these. We've got some others coming as we're going. Um, I'm going to ask these guys to chime in uh, here with any, any relevant bits um, as we go through these. And uh, please feel free to continue sending these in, uh, and we'll, we'll go from there. So um, first question uh, we have here is, how do we sign up for these programs and when? Um, so, so broadly, I'm going to kind of keep a high-level overview and then ask Adam and others to kind of jump in from the student perspective. But, but again, these, uh, these programs are electives. And so after you finish your core requirements, um, there is an open call uh, in which you would have the opportunity to see a non-confidential version of, of, uh, of our RFP for these clients and have the opportunity to apply to be a part of this, uh, a part of these programs. Uh, and that's, that's an application process that you, you might uh, find very similar to a job uh, in which um, you can submit a resume, cover letter, a substantial amount of inform information up front to get a sense of kind of what your passions and interests are. Um, where you might like to contribute, what skills you want to develop, um, and uh, and then and then people are assembled and placed into teams, uh, and then we are off to the races. And uh, and one of the things that those who have been really successful, especially those in this room, have done is that they've reached out early. So knowing that they wanted to uh, wanted to engage in some of these opportunities to get outside the classroom and start doing things immediately uh, as soon as they had the opportunity was. To, to start having some of these conversations with the CEL and the team here immediately to kind of learn what's coming down the pipeline, um, what, how, how they might be able to get involved, how they might be able to serve. Uh, and, and everyone here on this call today, Adam, and Rob, and Shaheen, and Cole, and Eric Hunt reached out early to kind of get a sense of what was coming down the pipeline 
and to also kind of differentiate themselves amongst the applicant pool uh, um, uh, early on. Uh, Adam, guys, anything else to add to that? The only other thing I would add is use your um, use your second year uh, MBAs as a resource. Um, there are uh, plenty of team leads and team members who have had gone through this this year, uh, including uh, Rob and Cole, um, and they'd be happy to talk to you guys about the, the experience. It also helps build your um, build your knowledge and um, helps you put together a better application. Uh, another question here: How competitive are these programs? And and uh, as a follow on to that, how do I myself become competitive? Um, so, so at a high level, um, these uh, there's students that specifically in the MBA program have essentially three to four semesters worth of, of time in which they can engage, uh, and these are electives again, different opportunities, different cycles that you have to get involved. Again, there are seven programs in the CEL. We just talked about three of them here, um, and there'd be multiple opportunities to get involved. Uh, they are competitive, um, and the way one stands out is to have those early conversations to to kind of make it clear, hey. Here's why I'm here. This is what I want to get out of this program. Uh, and this is what I'm really interested in doing. What's coming down the pipeline? So that our team, that the administration can get to know you, uh, get to know the leaders in the class, um, and, and, and which helps us when we're trying to put together the best team to, 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 do, the, to do the job. So, guys, anything to add? That, yeah, the, the competitiveness of the program is a reflection of, of the strength of your class. So. I wouldn't, uh, don't compare yourself to anybody in the class, but understand that these are competitive projects to get, but be extremely confident in your value proposition that you will provide to these programs. So whether or not you, you want to be a team lead, if you just want to be on the student-led team, understand that if you communicate your skills and you are confident in, in, the, in the value that you're going to, that you will provide, there's going to be a spot for you on, on one of these teams more than likely uh, because I know Daniel and his team work pretty tirelessly to form the right teams for the right projects. So um, it is competitive, but don't let that discourage you from reaching out, having those conversations, and, and again, be confident in, uh, in the value that you think you can provide to these teams. Another question here is um, how can these experiences help increase my employability? Um, so I'm sure these guys have some thoughts on that, but at, at a high level, um, it's a better story. Uh, it's something to actually talk about in an interview. Um, people want to know what the hell you were doing in Eastern, in, in Eastern Congo, right? Uh, it's a story behind that, that stamp in your passport, that story um, behind uh, when you might get the question of, have you managed people? Have you led teams? Um, what was that like? What was challenging about it? Um, uh, tell me about a time you had to deal with difficult team dynamics that it gives you a platform to kind of have some of those conversations um, and a more interesting bullet point on that resume that people are going to want to know about. So guys, are those thoughts? Yeah, I'll jump in, Daniel. Um, this is Rob Darwitz. Uh, so from a practical sense, Daniel mentioned uh, leadership experience, management experience. In my case, um, I didn't have a whole lot of management experience in, in, uh, on my resume. So this made perfect sense uh, to get that direct kind of experience. Um, and then the other thing he mentioned is, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who do hiring and they want, they want an interesting resume too, right? So um, there's many stories that you can pull from your experiences. And, and again, in Cole's case, going to the Congo, that's going to uh, pique somebody's curiosity. Um, in, in my case, working on a local project here, uh, chances are if you're interviewing with an employer from St. Louis, they're, they're going to have a question about, uh, about the development partnership and the, and the project. So, um, Yes, there's there's absolutely there's absolutely some indications as far as employability goes. And this is Cole to add to that real quickly. I was especially interested in joining a practicum my first semester I could because that's an amazing differentiator for your internship. So you know we're all first years interviewing for internships in the summer, and to talk about you know first of all peak an interest with with uh, an interesting consulting project like an NGO in the Congo that gets your attention, but then you can also talk about not only did I manage a client relationship, not only did I, I form a project, but I worked with my own team and led that. Um, it was just definitely a, a, an experience that really added some color to my resume and my interviews. There's a couple of tactical questions. Um, uh, international students are, have every level of, um, 
of eligibility as, as domestic students here too. So um, in fact, uh, we frankly, we're looking to put together as uh, interdisciplinary a team as possible. And that requires not just various skill sets, but various perspectives. And we have clients even specifically ask for diversity and ethnicity as well, because they know that they're going to get a better result um, uh, with, with multiple perspectives and disciplines at the table. Uh, um, another brief question is, uh, will specialized master's students be outside of the MBA talk about you know, the Masters of Finance, Masters of Accounting, et cetera, will they have the opportunity to engage during their time? Yes. Um, these programs are open to all the students at Olin and even students from across the campus as well. Um, another quick tactical question, is this um, paid or voluntary? Um, students are compensated with course credit. So these are classes. And so um, this is something, again, that goes on your resume, uh, but it's taken as a class. Um, it's graded as a class. Uh, and and, uh, and so the, the monetary compensation is, is not a factor here. Um, it's it's uh, the course credit towards your degree as well. Um, uh, another question that uh, is, is um, when we're talking about teams traveling to spend time on site with their clients, um, is, is this coming out of your pocket or is this coming out of the university's pocket? Um, you're there to work on your project with your client. So you're there and your time belongs to us and the CEL, but we're, we're covering the bill for you. Uh, so flights, accommodations, all those different sorts of things are, are covered as part of the program and, as, and in many cases, the client's covering that directly uh, so that we can get the job done. And that's why the expectations are, uh, are, are high. If there are other questions specifically, um, I might take one last one here. Um, question here that uh, maybe a gentleman in this room might have some thoughts on, but um, uh, one is, the, you know, in regarding the startup scene in St. Louis and in the U.S. in general, are, are the international students here at the Olin Business School, um, do they have similar opportunities to, um, to domestic students? And absolutely. I mean, that's, that's one of the benefits of getting involved in a program here. I might actually, I'm going to also turn it over to Rob Garwitz, who, again, is president of our, of our, our, our student club, the Entrepreneurship and Venture Capital Association. Uh, who has also a good sense of what other resources even outside of the CEL there are for budding entrepreneurs. Yeah, and I actually just wanted to share a quick anecdote um, for international students. Um, a classmate of mine um, actually is in talks. He's had, he's had a few interviews with a local startup here, an accelerator. Um, and this particular accelerator is actually looking to um, expand into global markets, one of which is India. And he's an Indian student, so naturally there, there, was, a, there was a natural fit there. Um, that's one anecdote, but there, there are a number of, of stories like that where there are startups um, that are at, already are thinking more globally or accelerators. Um, but since we're kind of out of time, there's, there's a number of different resources that, that are available to, to students that are interested in, in entrepreneurial type ventures. Um, it's not just, uh, just a tech startup scene. There, there's a very uh, varied amount of, of opportunities here. Thank you, Rob. That's, um, we're going to unfortunately have to close out, but thank you all for joining us. A special thanks to Megan and Beth for uh, getting us set up and, and coordinating the call for us, and special thanks to our panelists for your time as well. Um, and thank you all for joining us.